cameras first? Yeah. Facebook, right? right. That's the easiest TV. Bye. My brothers. So, uh, yeah, I'm at the, the episode way. where... Um, Oh, where they just killed like the prospector dude, the rich prospector. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I gotta watch Deadwood again. I yeah. told Tony and Chelsea to watch Deadwood. Yeah. And well, that inspired me to start rewatching it again. I right. Hope that they are, so, so I want to watch. I have to get oh, Aaron so to watch. Yeah. Was it, no, you do. Was yeah. it Deadwood shot in our like backyard, basically? No, it wasn't. Uh, it was so beautiful though. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ron does have Deadwood in his backyard though. No. That's a wow. metaphor. Jesus. <laughs> Hi, well, are we live? Yes. Oh, we should not be talking about Ron's dead wood. Think, well, good morning, um, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good really professional morning. as usual. <laughs> it is Camera Store TV Live. Yes, and uh, we're, we're doing something interesting today. Yep. Um, we've been doing the, the TCS TV show for, what, eight, nine years now? Eight, eight years. years yeah. Yes, long time. And would you say that we've made some mistakes over the years? I would say generally we're incredibly professional, much like the intro of this show here, <laughs> but also like the intro of this show. Occasionally things don't go exactly how I would like them yeah, to Yeah, we've made some mistakes. We've got some stories. Uh, we've lost a lot of gear. So we thought it'd be fun to just kind of go back through memory lane, talk about some of our stories and some yep. of our experiences. There's some good ones. Yeah. We also, though, want you at home to uh, let us know Things about the show that you maybe don't like. I'm mean, yeah. gonna <laughs> just tell us times that we've gone wrong. I yes, mean. exactly. Yeah. I, you know, it seems like every time there's an episode that we really make and we're like, oh, this is so good. This we is, really find yeah. it so funny. It generally doesn't get received very well. Yeah, I mean, photo survival, uh, not great. World photo games. It's the Olympics, so we just reposted that. Yeah, again. hopefully people yeah. watch it. They're yeah. so good, but no, you know, nobody watched them. But of course, if we post videos, we're like, oh, that was terrible. That we did was a terrible job. Yeah. Usually, they get uh, really good yeah, views in exactly. Wall Street. Yeah. So, anyways, you, uh, we don't so know we what we're talking about. So we clearly have no idea what you guys want. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're looking forward to hearing where we've misstepped. Uh, things like that, definitely. You could be mean. Know. Tell us which episodes of ours you hate. Things that we do that you hate. Uh, I know. I know it's the internet. It's hard to find, you know, strong opinions about things you dislike. <laughs> but try for us. And yeah. Uh, yeah, let us know how we can improve. And again, any questions, any comments, let us know. Yeah, we've got uh, our usual crew here. The whole gang is over there, um, and Ron will be fielding your questions. Uh, as well, we're trying something new. We're also on. Facebook simultaneously right now, yeah, we, which terrifies it, If you've me. been watching our live show from the very beginning, first off, congratulations. You're obviously some sort yeah, of you've put up masochist. Some garbage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because speaking of mistakes, maybe the live show is. Uh, but uh, we started on Facebook, and then we're like, oh, we should move to YouTube, move to YouTube, yep. get a review. Now we're back to both, hopefully. Yep. I don't know. Is it streaming and on Facebook? We'll keep throwing stuff up there. We're looking forward to Yes, let us know if everything's working on Our tech channels. guys are, are whispering in hushed tones, and they're looking at screens back and forth, but I assume hey, everything's Arx, okay. Hey, Arx, are they centered now? Anyway, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, some, some issues with composition, apparently. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. No, we're and of course, it's not that our live show is bad produ badly produced. We are actually... Um, trying to prove a point about how, you know, we make yeah. mistakes all the time. This is a learning thing, not on purpose. I think we've yeah. done a great job. Okay. Uh, let's get started, guys. So I wanted to jump to a fairly recent one. Um, okay. So uh, our Hasselblad video we worked on for like four or five months, something like this that? This is the Hasselblad X1D. Um, we did a sort of precursor to that where I believe I mentioned I hated the camera. That may have turned out to be. To be a slight mistake. Maybe, maybe hyperbolic. According to my boss. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we did that. We did preview. And then we thought, hey, let's take the camera. Out, let's really shoot it. And we got to play with it in uh, well, I, thought, I thought the small form factor made a lot of sense as a landscape camera. Sure. I mean, sure, it needs some more lenses to cover that range. But big sensor, very portable. Uh, we thought we'd give that a crack. Uh, yes. So we're going to jump over to I still heavily dislike that here. camera. Hopefully you guys can all see oh, that back. Yeah, so beautiful location um, for a drain culvert. Uh, it actually turned out pretty well. Yeah. I want you to make note that there's a tripod in that picture because, of course, you use tripods for landscape photography, yeah, right? You know, a lot of long exposure work. Yeah, stuff there's like the that. tripod again. And, you know, it's, a, it's such a beautiful camera that it does kind of tend to draw your eye a little bit. Um, so I could see how oh, you, know, there's you a might tripod. be distracted by that as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Still I really like to use the tripod as a compositional aid in a lot of these. You can <laughs> see, like, you know, that you get that nice strong diagonal. Through the shadows, exactly, yes. Exactly, uh, in so many of these shots. But um, There, I'm using a tripod there. Yeah, I, it's really important for the style of shooting. But at a certain point, um, that tripod ceases to be in a lot of these shots. 
And what yeah. happened there, Chris? So I don't know what happened there. I mean, we got back to Banff. I assumed we still had the tripod. We went to the hotel, and I assumed we had the tripod. Yes. We went home to Calgary. I assumed we had the tripod. We did not have the tripod. No. Uh, so someone out there got a beautiful Gitzo. What was that? It was, a, like it was a Gitzo GT Mountaineer 2540, which is everybody who's familiar with those knows. It's a very affordable tripod. Yeah. Dime a dozen. You can get them anywhere for like 10 bucks. With a nice ball head on there as well, I believe. So. Yeah. You know, oddly enough, the ball head wasn't very expensive. That was a Joby Gorilla Pod oh, Ball Head X. Ball heads for the price. I should say, if you guys are looking for an excellent Arca Swiss style head that's compact and light, you cannot go wrong with the Gorilla Pod. I use them all the time. If I need something portable on a slider or something like yes. that. Really awesome option. You also can't go wrong with a Gitzo GT2540 that you find for free in a parking lot at Marble Canyon. Yes, there is exactly one very affordable <laughs> Gitzo. So if someone out there is watching and they're like, oh yeah, I found that tripod at Marble Canyon. That's we our tripod. We want <laughs> <laughs> like, you stole it from us, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. And you know, if you guys have stories about what you've lost and what you've broken, oh man, please share those with us. So let's do one more and then mm. start fielding some questions. Um, this is one of my favorite shoots we've ever done. Yeah, let's preface this. We actually went out to Crow's Nest Pass. This is where we did a shootout with all the professional 24-70s at the time. Pentax yep. was the Tamron, but Pentax 24-70, the Canon 24-70, the Sony G Master, yep. Nikon 24-70. I want you guys to make note that the torch burns through steel like it is literally butter. Um, so yeah, we you know it was a fun shoot. We tested all the things, and we thought, why don't we get like that low light stuff where we've got our blacksmith here yeah. hitting metal yeah. sparks everywhere. Sparks. And yeah, a lot of detail shots were yeah. really important to us. Um, so we got back from that shoot, and um, you know, through through all the stuff back, uh, you know, just check and make sure that we're not missing any caps or anything like that. Yeah, of course. I mean, you um, always go over the gear, right? We borrowed the gear. What happened to it? Is yeah. it doing okay? And uh, what we noticed is we had somehow actually cooked off the coatings of the Pentax 2470. I was very surprised. Yeah, the front of the <laughs> the front of the Pentax 2470 had these small chips and melt marks all over the front element. It kind of looked like if you were just got a little water droplet on there. You see that all the time when something yeah. comes back and then you just, you know, microfiber cloth, wipe it off. I can't tell you and how many times. Wiping <laughs> and wiping and wiping. Yeah, it's amazing what a little bit of liquid cleaner and buffing with a microfiber cloth can do. But in this case, no. I'm really surprised because, um, you know, Pentax used to advertise, straight out advertise in the stores with their lenses. You could put cigarettes out on the glass. Yep. But I guess molten steel is significantly hotter than a I mean, I, I like to I, think that that was just in the back of your mind the whole time we were shooting this sequence. So yeah. Like, yeah, I'll just get a little closer than usual with the Pentax. Because People are always saying on the Instagram channel, they're like, hey, Chris, uh, this is great you tested this lens, but can you hit it with molten metal and will right. it survive? And the, so, I think it's great that that was the last test we did for that because otherwise we would have had melted coatings for our entire lens. Shoot. Yeah, so it's not a sales pitch. We think you should use UV filters. It actually would have really saved us hundreds and hundreds of dollars in this situation. Um, well, and I, I think UV filters are a selective thing. A lot of people buy them and just leave them on all the time. But just think, hey, is there a chance I could damage the front of this? With hot molten metal, yeah. 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 I wish I'd used one. That would have been a great time to make those kind of decisions. Ron, do we have any questions coming in there? Um, yes. Uh, a question unrelated to the current discussion about the RX100 Mark V as a good camera to recommend for a casual user, especially if they want to cover a family vacation. Yes, okay. almost a perfect camera for that. Almost as a perfect as, camera. As yeah. long as you don't need the long reach on it. If you do, then I would also check out the uh, ZS100. It's like the most amazing compact camera, but yeah. It has an autofocusing system designed for wildlife and sports, but a lens that is ugh, sorely uh, mistaken as a wildlife and sports lens. But beautiful image quality. Yep. Yeah, and, and uh, no UV filter on there, so don't hit it with molten metal. <laughs> and Nikon action cam at the bottom of a river? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we have a clip on that one. but We, we, uh, we don't because we can't uh, stream VR because we shot oh, that right. entire But episode. let's talk about that while we're on the topic. Yeah, we... Um, See, this, this is one I love because generally <laughs> you're not, you know, the kind of person who is overly concerned with you know things failing stuff like that we've had a pretty good track record I, on our show. yeah in that particular one though i was like this could really go horribly wrong for us yeah. so we ran safety cable uh we were vigilant we, we were vigilant running. we but were we were going down the bow river fly <laughs> fishing with uh the, our friends from trout fitters who are an excellent um establishment in calgary and you uh like fishing 
Yeah, if you like fishing. So Jordan had a horrible time, but you can watch that video. Please watch that video. It was our first sort of VR video. So they had their 360. First and only. First and only. <laughs> they had their 360 key mission, and we had our 360 key mission. And yeah, there was there was a part where we had it on a pole in the middle of the boat, yep. of all places. And uh, we're going down the river, and then, yeah, you were like, okay, let's move that over, see if we can get a, a different shot. And right there, unclipping it. Yeah. Unclipping the safety cable. Unclipping so the safety you could move cable. The safety cable over. Uh, yeah. yeah. Bounced. Uh, it was great. Nice yeah, bounce it fell on the seat. Right off the boat side into the water. Middle of the lake. Mi middle river. Yeah. Rit liver. In, li liver. Rit liver. Middle of the liver. Riddle, middle of the liver. Why do we do these in the morning, Chris? I don't know. <laughs> You know, and it's funny because, of course, if anybody's ever dropped a camera uh, or, oh, or the dropped the water, yeah. you watch it in slow-mo, right? Like, yeah. it just slowly comes down. I watch it bounce off the boat. It goes in the water. You kind of think, like, oh, that's not good. Yeah. That's a problem. Hey, hang on. No, we can, we can. It's a waterproof camera. We can do so. Oh, no. We're well, in the then middle you contemplate, like, should I just dive straight in, lav mic and all, into six feet of water and try to find it? But, you know, I believe it was river. freezing water. It was freezing cold water. Yeah. yeah so uh, suffice to say, yeah, if somebody finds a 360 key mission again, it's ours. We want Let's it. Let's just call these giveaways. We're giving a we giveaway, <laughs> a tripod, a key yeah. mission 360. We're so generous, but yeah. you have to follow our trail. We give back to the photographic community. You have to follow our trail and you have to decide. <laughs> discover these yeah. things that we've left behind for you. <laughs> Anything else, Rob? Uh, let's see. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's... Trout fitters, that had, they still have their key mission, by the way. Yeah. Huh. Uh, the, these are more camera questions and not, like, actually on the topic. That's itself. okay. It's a live All show. Right, We're cool. here to help you so, out. So, uh, Canon 1D X Mark II versus Sony A7R three for video. Both will fail if you drop them into the Bow River off of a boat. So, <laughs> I'm going to call it a fair draw. Fair uh, game. <laughs> All right. And if you melt something on the front of it, they will both fail as well. Equally no, weak. Uh, A7R three hands down. Way more efficient codec. You get log recording on it. Um, choice of Super 35 or full frame capture as opposed to just full frame Absolutely. or Super 35 when you're shooting 4K. So, and the 1DX2 uh, does nice video. And but you get yeah. an EVF. You know, I think DSLR form factor is, you know, uh, past its prime. Especially for a 1DX body. It's yeah. too big and bulky it, it for that. It shoots great video. I know people who are using them, yeah. but it's just the wrong form factor, I think. Yeah. Okay. A7R3. Uh, question, is GoPro done? Considering Sony makes the best action camera available and phones are more waterproof and improve video capabilities. I think so. they're going to stick around just because they've become the band-aid of action cams. When someone's yeah. like, I need a small camera for something, they don't say like, oh, I need a portable action camera. They say, I need a GoPro. As long as that stays the case, they're going to have. Yeah. But no, I think the times of them being this juggernaut and them being like, we're a media company now, things like that. And it was a bunch of silly mistakes. A vector to sell Red Bull. I yeah. think, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think the go, I think the action market camera has really slowed down is the problem. You know, everyone's got one yeah. and the improvements haven't been that dramatic. I mean, there was a period when you'd go GoPro Hero 1 to 2 to 3, the HD yeah. heroes, huge upgrades. But now, now? it's like, no. you know, five and then six. You're like, what? We got 4K6. I agree the Sony action cam is a really nice camera, though, but. Um, you're right. When from a sales point, when people come in and look for action camera, they still pretty much go GoPro they right off go the bat. So display. I think GoPro's doing good. I just think the whole action camera is doing bad. And I think Nikon took a big misstep trying the key mission. Um, but they're very waterproof, hence you can find one at the bottom of the Bow River in six feet of water, and it'll probably still be working. Yeah, I think GoPro will sell, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's going to go to one of the bigger companies. They'll keep the branding, and they'll still be around, but they're going to be a niche small thing, which is a shame because they were, as uh, Tony and Chelsea did a great episode about the history of GoPro uh, on their channel, you know, they are the only American camera company. Uh, Absolutely. So it's, it's a shame to see them as horribly mismanaged as they have been. Okay. Uh, any stories about the hoops you had to jump through to get unsung cameras working? Uh, our favorite by far would be the Kodak NC2000. Yes, when we uh, when we tried to get that DCS camera running, was it NC2000 or a 14? No, it was. A yeah, it was NC2000. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, a, a very good technical science friend of ours rigged up a Ted Wingate. You can yeah, credit him. Yeah, Ted Wingate. He <laughs> he's not that, in witness protection. Is that his name? <laughs> um, yeah, he rigged up a working battery system for us. I believe his words were, "Don't leave this plugged in charging." For, for longer than you know it needs to be because it will catch fire. And don't let it go below a certain voltage. Yes, or it, or it will, it will crack and leak and catch yeah, fire. Catch fire. Um, 
Luckily, it didn't. Uh, yeah, so that was exciting, but we got it to work. It was incredible. We found ancient CF cards that were not too big for the ancient uh, format system of that camera. Yeah. Uh, what we actually had to do is drop an old CF card into a smart... PC, PC card MCIA adapter. PCIA yeah. card adapter. Yeah. Um, we found one where the label was basically... It looked like it had gone through a washing machine a couple times. My favorite thing of that whole process was then throwing those Kodak files into Lightroom, which supported them. <laughs> <laughs> of course it did, yeah. And they still look like crap, but yeah, yeah that was... Was, that was fun. I, that all came yeah. together. It worked. So far, we haven't had any issues with unsung cameras uh, getting them going, except that one. That needed quite a bit of work. Yeah, and we do have some unsung camera action coming up. Oh. Um, this is another one of my... Oh, we're playing another one? Yeah. yeah. This is another one of my memories that comes up quite a bit. Um, we don't get the chance to shoot in Banff. People are always like, why don't you guys shoot in Banff all the time? You have and to pay huge fees. I mean, uh, yeah. you, know, you can certainly go and shoot there yourself. It's because we're producing a YouTube show. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it technically falls under commercial production. But we were able to piggyback on a workshop. Uh, so they had oh, a yes. permit for that. Um, so we were like, that's amazing. We'll go out. We'll shoot some, you know, great sunrise sunsets. This was for our telephoto yeah, shootout. This was with the Brian Sony Mary, I believe. Brian Mary yep. and Royce Howland. Royce Howland, yep. Shop. Uh, so everything seemed like it was worked out perfectly. We uh, checked into our hotels separately, and uh, we were able to capture a kind of beautiful moment. If you can jump over to the uh, screen there, guys. This is in the lovely hotel Lake Louise as well. I beautiful. mean, this is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely check this out. Um, but, yeah, we did kind of have a moment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's a moment. Yeah. And if, now this is this is one thing I do want to mention. There's very little editorial control taken away from us working in the store, but our boss specifically said, "Can you not show the second empty <laughs> the second bed?" And we're like, and "We're I showing the empty bed." And I second. want a minute of yeah. showing the empty second. I bed. believe and they we... were like, "No, but we'll come, we'll meet halfway. You can show the empty second bed for half a second." Before yeah, you yeah. Out. which I think still works great. Yeah, so that was that was a bit of censorship, and I understand where they're coming from, but it was it was adorable. Yeah, that was a nice night. Um, yeah, suffice to say, we actually did have separate. Oh, we actually had separate rooms. No, that was actually. Oh, we had we the were, same room, yeah. but we did sleep Those in were back separate in the beds. Early days That's of right. TCS TV, where yeah, we did sleep in separate beds. Um, <laughs> why, that also why would you. Pull, show them behind the curtain like that. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. it was a lovely night, yeah. and I'll never forget it. And I don't think it was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, and that reminds me of another thing. I don't know. If we have a clip, but of course, one of our earliest videos, one of my favorites, still was the memory card, um, you yeah, know, survival test. If people are asking, like, of your early videos, which is your favorite? I would have to go to. Oh the yeah, the memory card shootout. So Check good. It out if you get a chance. But yeah, we got some flack for being in a uh, bathtub together at the end of that scene. And you know, just a quick story. If you guys watch that video, we are in the bathtub, and I intended to have the memory card in my hand. So it's like, oh, where's the memory card? And I was oh, just like right fake looking around and pull it out. I legit dropped that card <laughs> in the bath uh, and then did have to basically like reach, ar around. <laughs> reach around to find it. <laughs> That's a good turn of phrase. <laughs> yeah, I gave Jordan oh, a reach around to get oh. the card. And uh, anyways, it all worked out. And uh, let's never speak of that again. Yeah, We're not going to show that video clip. Oh. Uh, <laughs> reach around. Um, we gained some viewers and lost some viewers so on that video, though. I will say that. Yeah. Anything else there, Ron? Yeah, there's there's loads of questions. Mm, so great. we'll um, take all of them. Let's do it. Okay, so lightning round. Uh, should I buy the Nikon D750 or wait? Uh, you should always buy the D750. It's an excellent camera, and you could always when in wait. Doubt, always buy the D750. Yeah, it is an amazing camera. I don't know. Like, is Nikon going to come out with new exciting SLRs that are Maybe. really going to blow it away? Hard to say. I think they might be banking some of that thunder for they've said there's a professional mirrorless camera coming. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we're going to see anything till Photokina, if I were guessing. Um, so, you know, if you need something now. Yeah. I would uh, never the regret. is still, yeah, just such I would a never regret buying a D750. Since yeah. the day it was launched, it's yeah. always been a solid. Do it. Okay. Do it. Uh, Chris and Jordan, looking for a new mirrorless cam for travel. X-T2 and X-T20 caught my eye. How good is the video feature on the Fuji body for casual video travel stuff? Perfect for as casual. As opposed to the 6300, 6500. Well, I, I would say the X-T20 is a little weaker uh, yeah. on the video features. Uh, you know, with You're the not going to get a log file. With the X-T2, like you've got the option. Yeah, so log recording externally. You can get a headphone jack, mm -hmm. nice big uh, 3.5 mic jack yeah. in. So the X-T2 is actually a really excellent body, and it's a great video autofocuser. I was talking yes. with Max Uriev about this. I think it's really 
Canon, and then Sony and Fuji are kind of fighting for second place for video autofocus. I agree. I think they do a great job. But you have to appreciate, though, the X-T2 is quite a large body in comparison. It's a big, full, weather-sealed, rugged body. An X-T20, a 6300, they definitely represent They're smaller cameras. Yeah. So I'd say it depends how casual your video use is. If you want high-quality video and you're not going to worry about external mics very much, X-T20 does a great job. If you want to have some editing potential or room to grow, better audio control, X-T2 or Sony would make yeah, an excellent choice. Size. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, you're right. 6500, 6300, awesome cameras that give you great video, and they're compact. Yep. Anything else there, Ron? Um, loads. Yes. Uh, okay. Let, let's see if we can get one on topic. One on topic <laughs> would be super. Well, we cool. had the, yeah. we had the, yeah, we had one. Sure. <laughs> How good is the new G1 X Mark III for street photography? There's That's, a topic. I don't like it. Do I don't like it. No, <laughs> I, I honestly can't. No, 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 I'll follow up with one. All I right, can't right. see why you wouldn't just use a G5X, which will give you. Similar depth of field, it's cheaper, you get a nicer zoom range. Yeah. yeah. I think we, in our G1X3 video, really hammered out where you want that camera is if you need the dynamic range at low ISO. Yep. Otherwise, you're better served by yeah. smaller, less expensive, compact one-inch sensor cameras. And again, it makes sense because you think, oh, street photography, there's going to be a lot of low-light situations with movement, and there are. I mean, that's one of the challenges of street photography. But in that regard, the G1X doesn't really give you an advantage because although it has a more sensitive sensor, uh, it also has a slower lens. So you're going to get the same shutter speeds. You're going to get the same noise at those shutter speeds. It's not going to be really evident. Yeah. On topic question, okay. Ron. On topic question. What is the worst experience you had in a post, starting from recording to uh, ingesting to editing and publish? Honestly, the VR video was a real headache for me. That was because you know, it was new territory, right? You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, there was no. I mean, now it's nice. We, if you're curious, we cut all of Camera Store TV on Final Cut 10. Yeah. Um, and that uh, particular video at that point, there was no support for it. Oh, so yeah. it was a matter of importing this wide frame and then I'd have to keep the ratios exactly the same figuring out. You, you had know, to transcode it through different programs. There was no way for me to preview it. I had to upload it onto YouTube to see how it yeah, worked. And VR. specifically reformat to a very like down to the pixel resolution for ratio of a frame to fit or else yep. Final Cut wouldn't take it in. And yep. Yeah, those days are kind of gone now, but uh, is VR still a thing? Is I mean, VR still a thing? I still think like is it I for, is for it? tourism for video games gaming, yeah. stuff like that yeah, yeah Arizona absolutely. Sunshine was great I don't know what that is okay well, that's okay I'm busy we'll fighting take you, with we'll, Codex we'll, we'll take you we'll take you to the VR arcade <laughs> oh that big that'd be great let's do that um, yeah that was probably the worst one another one that stands out is the NX one the Samsung because H two six five support was still in its infancy when that ah uh, yes um, so we signed up for a Wondershare account which it turns out they will uh, just keep renewing indefinitely. <laughs> Uh, after you forget about the program, which we found out a couple of years later. Our peeps are dealing with struggles, but mm -hmm. Ron, what's going on? Uh, let's see. Okay. So. Um, you know what else was well, a rough one? Was the, the EM-1-2, where you shot, what, like 1,500 autofocus test shots? Yeah, I guess I, I should say, like, ha have I had any challenges with a post? I mean, the only problems we really have are often we're looking at brand new cameras and there's no support. No so support. there's a lot of workarounds and silky picks crap and DNG Canon converter. Professional. Oh, the worst. That new Nikon software? It's not ViewNX or something like that? Just terrible. Yeah. But uh, no, I've, I haven't had, you know, editing photos is easy. Yeah. In comparison, it's always tricky too when we do like the wooden nickels, and we should say we have coming up February 16th on Friday here in YYC. Check out our website, go to the Globe Cinema Theater because yes. we are having our, our full screen viewing of our latest wooden nickels test, and uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. So, check that out. Actually, but Jordan always has to do a lot of like uh, turning things into DCP formats and getting things right for broadcast and stuff. That can be a little bit tricky, that can be a bit of a headache for sure. Um, keep vamping. Vamping? Oh, what are you doing? Any other questions, Ronnie? Uh, I just... Uh. Jordan's trying to, gonna show her wood nickels. No. Oh, uh, yeah. You <laughs> so this, uh, I don't know if you can... Do we have the computer up here, can fellas? Can we kick over to the computer? Um, so uh, Nick Thomas, the DP who did this, uh, was nice enough to you know get us some professional color grading. And he's like, yeah, I got some guys, Company 3, who are going to do the grade for your video. Yeah. Uh, so we're like, all right, um, you know, I'm not in that world. I have no idea. So when we're putting the poster together, I'm like, oh, I'm going to give these guys a Google. And uh, I get like. Yeah, this. so this is what Company 3 does. 
Um, so these guys are handling the grade on a wooden nickels episode. Be yeah, coming out. Later you got this Star week. Trek. You got James Bond. You know, you got Marvel movies, uh, Planet of the Apes, and then you've got wooden nickels. We've got Chris Nichols. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we're right next to Gal Gadot and, uh, I, and, and I, Wonder Woman. And I can definitely say. Um, it turned out unbelievably mm. well. Uh, I'm really excited did a, about this. He did a beautiful job, but oh, man. Uh, Are we uh, over our element? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, off topic, lightning round. Seriously, <laughs> GH5S or EVA1? That's a tough. I mean, it depends what your priorities are. The evil one does have more dynamic range. Um, okay. You know, we can see yeah. that, especially if you want to shoot log. Mm -hmm. um, I found out some interesting stuff at a recent Panasonic trip about using hybrid log gamma as opposed Jordan to Jordan is an HLG convert, whereas before he said, this is only for people's high-def TVs to make stuff look Pushing too pushy. Through. Yeah, too but, uh, yeah, if you're looking to maximize dynamic range, HLG in the GH5 and the GH5S will actually get you slightly more dynamic range than log recording, which yep. I wouldn't have thought. Um, but yes, the EVA 1, if you're shooting log, um, higher dynamic range, higher dynamic absolutely. Range. More attachment um, points. I mean, it really comes down to a handling thing, doesn't yeah, it? it really does. The other thing is, it's a bigger sensor. So ND I filter built in. I would have thought low light would be better for the EVA 1 um, because it's a Super 35 chip. But honestly, we found the GH5S is a stronger low light yeah, performer. Yeah, slightly better low light. Um, the only other thing is, raw support is coming for the EVA 1. I'm guessing they're going to launch it at NAB. Right. And that's going to get you 5.7K raw. Man. And that's going to be wonderful. Insane. But you're going to need an external recorder for that. So yeah, it's for higher end productions. For us, certainly, I think the GH5S would be the stronger camera for the way that we shoot. Uh, but for the most stuff, we're going to stick with the GH5. I love the stabilizer so much. Sure. And the video is slightly sharper on the GH5 as well. Uh, right afterwards, it was uh, GH5S with old school GH2, GH4 stabilizing approach or regular GH5 with ISBS or even G9. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, again, we, we love the IBIS uh, for what we do for running gun for using on a monopod. The IBIS makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, GH5S is, is I think, largely going to be relegated to cinema work, tripod work, oh, sticks, low I'll light I'll special stuff. I'll tell you what stuff. the GH5S could be relegated to. Ron, give me that close up camera right now. Uh, yeah, right now. Oh, yeah, because it's oh, G yeah. Jets GH5S. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's on us right now. Locked off shots uh, where it's, image quality is the most important. It's picture thing. in picture right now. Because oh, ooh. Yeah. But make note that it's not moving at all, and that's because it's on a tripod. Because if you hand hold these bad boys, it's not great, obviously. Yeah, and you can see that in our G9 episode, which yeah. was shot with the GH5S. I had some camera wobble again. Yeah. Now, fortunately, the okay. rolling shutter camera is so good, it's not terribly distracting. But. G9 video is good, but again, that's not what they're aiming it for. So yep. you've got three cameras that are very similar, aimed at different markets, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Uh, another question there, Ron? Um, wait. Uh, Lewis, no, we cannot break NDA. We don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, let's see. We're not going to let Ron talk anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, is the age of DSLRs? If you would like to be a producer on a camera store TV live, <laughs> you, you are drop more your than, resume. You are yeah. more than welcome. Yeah, uh, the pay is $0. Yep. So I took this sucker. The perks day. are you get abused by TCS TV. Pretty, yeah, pretty the, much. The commentators pretty much. will call you an I need new shoes. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's, let's show another clip. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, no, okay, go ahead, Ron. All right. Uh, is the age of DSLRs over and are Nikon and Canon going to survive? Because they are going to survive because they think they're going to really start pushing more into the mirrorless market and they've got a lot of cachet in the name. But they DSLRs will always be around. They're fun to shoot. I yeah. think people will look forward. To, I think as the technology gets better and better, it's going to come down to the shooting experience, yeah. right? That's why rangefinders are still around. Is it technically the best form of photography? No, but it's a really cool shooting experience. Sure. And I think that's where DSLRs will be. But if you're using I think, it, if you're paying the bills with photography, I think we're gonna see the transition yeah. to mirrorless. I think DSLRs though are gonna have to kind of go the Canon Rebel SL2 route where they figure out ways to innovate. Well, Canon's already done it, but other companies have figured out better, better ways to autofocus properly in live view as well as of course through the viewfinder as normal. Yep. Um, the SL2 is an awesome kind of hybrid almost. Yep. And uh, yeah. I'd so love to see a true hybrid SLR. Yeah. There, there's so many patents about that out there, but an no EVF, one's actually done uh, EVF based it. SLR with no mirror. Yeah, uh, no, cool. or just put a mirror box in and be able to cycle between EVF and optical if sure. you're using that space anyways. That'd, That'd be cool. make a lot of sense. That'd be cool. But things are gonna have to change. Yeah. Um, 
Are we going to see another camera duel with Chris and Dave Paul? I'd love to. Oh, we should, hey? It's, I mean, it's funny because Dave and you used to share a day off, so we could do a lot of Dave Paul shootouts. Not the case anymore, which is why Dave hasn't been on the channel. But people love Dave. <laughs> yeah, Everyone we we Dave. definitely want to do more shootouts. The last one we did was you and I doing the yeah. LX10s versus Dave's the Arch. Dave's not here, no, not here today. He's not here today. But we will do another one. We'll yes. bring him on a live show because I know everyone misses Dave. Let's watch this this the other clip. This yeah. right. this is interesting. I mean, the video. Our, let's, get, let's get a little backstory on this one. So um, this is from our Hasselblad versus D800. When yes. The uh, full frames really started pushing. The we played with the idea: level. can an SLR compete with medium format? Uh, Dale and Michelle from Roth and Ramberg here. They're big Hasselblad medium format users. They've been using H3s and H4s. If you get a chance, check out Roth and Ramberg online. Beautiful Their photography. Their portfolio is spectacular, yeah. and they're great people. I would really like to do something with them again. But you people were mean to them, so yes. they're not going to do it again. But this was a late night, and Mark Langridge, who is uh, now in our in our web department, he uh, he was very kind to help us out doing sound for us, and he yeah. is a sound designer himself, and. Uh, so he's holding the boom pole, but the poor guy wasn't feeling well. And didn't eat. And didn't eat. And TCS TV is a very dangerous location, and well, you'll this see is, what happens. This is a uh, cement floor, I would like to point out. Yeah, well. hard barbershop like, floor. Listen sort of to the sound. The sound really makes this. Oh, oh, oh man. That was so rough. So uh, Chris is a hero. We should point that out. Right no, now. Uh, but you, Mark Smash like f like just passed out face first, broken nose, like it was rough. Yeah, um, and had his tongue in his throat. This yeah, is why so you're a hero. we pulled so his Chris tongue out of his throat, extracted, and uh, then you know, and then we spent the night. Another in the girl rolled him over on his side, and he wouldn't die. And uh, Michelle was amazing. She was on the phone with nine one one. Basically, you can see her reaching at the end of this frame before I cut the camera uh, for her phone. Yeah, so. and also amazingly, the hospital is uh, in this is like. Like right across the street from the barbershop. We could have just carried Mark over, but you know, the ambulance came, paramedics dropped him out. He was okay. We hung out with him. He was fine. He's but still fine. yeah, TCS TV can be very dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. So bear that in mind when volunteering. We have some more painful when volunteering moments. for a producer position. <laughs> yeah, because you might get hurt. Yeah, so far <laughs> I've managed not to die. Um, have you guys ever messed up on white balance? You guys so yeah. bad. Ian and Gary, Ian, Ian, Ian get, and Gary, are Ian and Gary are going to have to prepare to get hurt at some yeah. point too, yeah. emotionally yeah. and physically. Yeah. Uh, have you guys ever messed up on white balance so bad that it wasn't fixable in post? Yes. Speaking of which, in the beginning, uh, admit it. Did you ever say we'll fix it in post? I. Yeah, I say we'll fix it in post a fair amount. Um, uh, we sh you shoot a lot of log. Um, well, no, I mean more in terms of when you're running through, you know, you're like, oh, I totally screwed up. I called that the wrong thing or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, we watch our coverage episode to see how we work around that a lot of the time. Jordan's pretty good about getting the white balance right. I, I don't edit my photos very much at all, so, you know, we're, we're pretty close on that too, and, and we haven't had any major issues. But, again, remember, you know, with RAW, you don't have the freedom, oh, and with Post as well, log files, you don't have the freedom to do whatever you want with color. Uh, you're still always uh, a you victim to, to what the or original light is. It gives you more room to play, but yeah. it's not raw. A lot of people are like, oh, you can just always fix the white balance. A great example, if you check out our RX-10-2 video, um, I'm sure we'll throw the link there in the comments. Yeah. Um, that was one where we went out. I had the camera set to daylight, and we were shooting kind of deep. Uh, oh, motor's gone. Oh, yeah, I'll fix that. Um, so we were shooting like way under a lot of canopy. Uh, yeah. It was in BC, a lot of big trees over there. So very green tone to the white balance. And I was not able to fix it. You know, I tried pumping as much. Yeah, as sometimes you just the can't. The skin tones just went all to hell. So, you know, it is one of those things where now my thing is I'll shoot in a standard picture profile, get that white balance pinned in where I want it, and then jump over to log yeah. recording. Because um, it's so hard to see when you're I looking will say, at that gray image. Where uh, you know, on our videos, Jordan will often, um, you know, he's like, oh, I, this one I did such a good job on the color. I'm really happy with the grade. And then everybody's like, oh, that grading was, nah, it wasn't very good. You Everybody guys need proper it, colors. Yeah. And then on the Panasonic G9 video where we're shooting under overcast light, uh, it's white the whole day. It's <laughs> You basically didn't do anything to the grade nope. at all. Everybody's like, that was amazing. Your grade was so good. I think, so <laughs> I think people were just excited to see uh, all the information in the sky and the shadows. Jordan's like, I'm just going to do like... 4,700 Kelvin the whole way through, done. Well, and that's yeah. something interesting about the GH5S is it has, I've found very similar dynamic range to the GH5, but those shadows are so much cleaner that you can really, I don't have to overexpose as much as I typically Absolutely. do. Uh, so we were able to hang on to the sky in that, and I think that's why everybody liked that grade so I much. I think so. Yeah. Anything, Ron? Um, 
We got lots of videos to get through. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on 8K cameras? Uh, I'm going to do a video on yes. why resolution matters a whole hell of a lot less for video capture than photography. Uh, I think resolution is the wrong direction to be pushing things. Oh, yeah, yeah right it complicates now. things further. The benefits are fairly minor, but we'll talk about that. We're going to do a whole video about that. It's going to be great. Yes, We're going to get a red helium. Uh, we're going to have our GA. But I think you already know Jordan's kind of uh, major thoughts on that right yeah. off the bat. When, when you're questioning, what's Jordan going to think about this? Just like, yeah. what would an old man... Jordan hates the number a eight. A grumpy old he man. He hates the number eight. It. So, On uh, a side point, though, number eight, super lucky, and Chinese New Year's coming very soon. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's jump into another clip yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of yeah. One of our classic blunders. So... Um, you know, we're very professional, but uh, are we for wooden nickels? We like to work with real professionals. Yes uh, Professional filmmakers uh, our buddies DDG when did our good fellows one. Uh, this was our second major wooden nickels Yeah, uh, but yeah, let's have a look at this. So um, one we like to s smoke a scene We were trying to do good fellows which has a lot of cigarette smoke in the shot. Yeah, you yeah. want atmospheric So you can already see it clearly there. Yeah, Oh and yeah. Which then tripped uh, the fire alarm, which we've never <laughs> run into before. If you're using, you know, a good fog machine, it's water vapor. Shouldn't trigger this. This is a new type. This is yeah. what they call a visual one, where it looks for things that seem slightly hazy and then trips the alarm. Yeah, that was that was bad all around. Uh, <laughs> that is indeed the Calgary Fire Department. Very brave people. They yeah. came and showed up. There's us looking. Roofle. Yeah, you can see oh, it was it was a it was a cold day, of course, because Alberta. But you know that building. First off, it's like four stories high. Okay, there's offices in there. There's businesses. And it used to all be one big connected building, so they're still all set up. All oh, of these man. businesses on the same fire alarm. Yeah, and of course it's a business block, so if one building does catch fire, like everything goes off. So yeah, it suffice to say we, we largely evacuated we, an entire we've... city block. With our wooden shooting, nickels thing. Shooting our dopey YouTube show. Thank you, Calgary Fire Department, for not charging us thousands they, of dollars they, in they fines. They visual smoke detectors to us. They were absolute angels about it. But as and a word... We apologize for your tax as dollars. A, <laughs> <laughs> wasted. As a cautionary tale, um, if you are going to do atmospherics inside spaces, do check that because you do not want to repeat that mistake. So make sure that your smoke uh, detectors are not going to get tripped by, you know, stage-based smoke machines yeah yeah there's a spray you can get there is a, a, a which apparently will still trip a visual smoke oh detector. damn so um yeah uh be careful yeah. out there people we love the look of hazing our shots um it's a great aesthetic but it can burn you that apparently. was bad that was a bad day yeah bad day wow. anything else coming in there rondo uh are we ever going to talk about the gopro view fusion nope Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, see, I could have answered that, but yet I'm the, the jerk who can't answer these You questions. are the monkey. Tell us what we, yeah. we will answer. No, um, I mean, my background is not VR. It would be a fun experiment to try doing a VR episode again. But, um, you know, we have access to the GoPro Fusion, and no one's ordered yeah, one. Yeah, it's, and so. it's really so limiting in how you can move the camera, or really, to be honest, not move the camera is kind of the key. But, yeah, I really want to see somebody who's... You know, there's um, Lubeski has done a VR movie that's apparently quite an experience. Yes. I want to see a great storyteller use it to tell a great story because right now I haven't seen anything that's inspiring me to use VR to tell yeah. a story. We've had Lubeski in the store, but we are not Lubeski. No. Not that anyone's going to make that. If anybody, wa <laughs> if anybody watches our live show, you know that our audio is consistently poor sometimes, although I think the boys have really gotten it narrowed down here now. But yep. um, Oh, we've been getting great comments about our audio. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so this we're having major problems with our audio. Ellipses. Uh, no, it, it's fixed. No, our, our audio is pretty much on point in some places. Yay! Yeah, the one show with the audio guy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that one was good. Um, anyway. But here we did our own audio, and you know we were doing this in the store, and yeah, sometimes you just have a really painful sound. Yeah, so here, here's a classic life lesson for you. Let's uh, pay attention here, and you might notice something's not quite where it should be with the audio in this. Well, listen to the background. Yeah. As in it's absent. Yeah, so what you might hear there is what happens when you set up a shot, um, you know, not paying attention. This is not a beautiful composition, so we certainly didn't put no. too much thought into that. But you put a shotgun mic on a boom pole directly underneath the AC Air vent, vent yeah. um, for the store, which wasn't running when we set it up. But uh, there's no one <laughs> checking audio here. 
and uh, it was blowing directly into the back of the shotgun mic. If Always you <laughs> blow air at the back of a shotgun mic, You'll it hear will it. sound terrible. Yeah. Now, what's really frustrating about this, we've done some video-centric stuff that I'm really proud of. That Goodfellas would be a great yes. example of it. No film school chose to feature this particular video. <laughs> <laughs> Not once, but they keep reposting this video over That's and over amazing. as the entire North. Of, well, I mean, the information the, is yeah. solid, yeah. Uh, but the, the audio is terrible. community is like, these guys are trying to talk about pro gear. They can't even get their audio right. And I'm like, oh, thank God that storm has blown over. And then no film school reposts it again. And I get to look at all the comments tearing yes. into us once again. So, Shotgun mics have their strengths and they weaknesses. also have their weaknesses. So, um, yeah. You know, get a sound guy constantly monitoring your audio. Don't set it up. Think it's fine. And it's walk funny. Away from In it. our latest Wooden Nichols, hey. we had Ron from Whispering Wind Studios, our uh, professional, very skilled sound guy. Yeah. And he was doing shotgun mic for that. But we were in um, we were in a restaurant, an old building, an old building, and the guy's like, "You can't turn off the heat because it'll take three days to get this thing back up to temperature. It's like winter." Yep. So we had to have it running, and so he had Ron just put blankets up and buffered it out, and you could hear it when you're in there. But listening yep. through to sound recording afterwards and the, the cleaning up he did in post, yep. it's gone. It sounds great. They did a spectacular Amazing. job on that. Um, and I mean, that's the difference with a pro too. It was great. As soon as we got there, it's like, uh, can we turn this off? And the guy's like, no. And he's like, okay, I'm going to need blankets. Yeah. Yeah. Tape the <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he just got up there and taped blankets over the AC vent. It was yeah. great. By the way, we're having a little bit of a meta moment. Jordan, if you notice the video, that you're wearing the same, you're wearing the same. Oh, sweater. sweet. Yeah. There you go. I uh, have three shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> Worst comment made in a video that you later regretted? Oh, that people have, that we've said to people? Or oh, that people I don't know. Said to us? Damn. Just... Or things that I've said. Yeah. You, you've been called a libtard a lot lately. Whoa. Um, yeah, it's funny. I, yeah, you know, I mean, I made a global warming comment. Uh, you said racism was bad. So those are I two said, strikes. yeah, that's funny. I don't regret that. I said racism was bad. And then some guy's like, oh, Stop why are you making political. it so political? I'm like, uh, I don't think racism is really a political thing. It's just, it's just racism. But anyways, so I don't regret saying that. Um, I don't regret saying that global warming Stop is Stop being a thing. so political on the live show. Oh, man. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, I I generally don't regret the things I say, and I probably should. But I a lot of the time regret not being as sassy as I want to be in the comments. I've never once posted a sassy rebuttal to somebody and later said like, eh, it was maybe a little bit harsh there. So I'm gonna just embrace that. Side what I actually more. I love the the comments that our viewers make in our defense. Like someone will say something mean, and then yeah. oh man, the viewers will just just chew them out in a great way. And uh, I can't mention his name, but super. Um, something something was uh, very good with his response. Oh, uh, he's, he was, that was the, one of the best rebuttals we ever heard. But um, anyways, yeah, we can, no, we regret yeah, nothing. <laughs> Although I did get a lot of flack for saying I hate the X1D. Yeah. My favorite response... Uh, Jerry, you put your fist down. I'll shake my fist on you. <laughs> my favorite response to people being animals on the comments, uh, I'm actually stealing from Tony Northrup, which is to just say, be nicer. Oh, yeah, be nicer. I yeah. think it's good advice generally in life. That's weird because so. he's from Connecticut and really originally from Texas, but that's such a Canadian thing to say. Yeah, works. Yeah. Puts people at ease. <laughs> no, we did edgy. I'm, what else I you got for me, I probably said something that I definitely regret. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to think about that. Yes, Jordan, let's start a YouTube channel. Oh, together. yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Here's another thing. I never regret saying negative things about Pentax cameras because it's true when I say them, but man, does it get a lot of flack afterwards too. So there you go. I regret saying anything negative about Pentax cameras when Pentax people are watching said video. <laughs> and they will. Uh, K12 rumors. Looks yeah, like that's interesting. Hey, yeah, yeah, the K1 has been do. officially discontinued. Uh, there's a couple sensors out there that would be a good fit for that camera. So, I mean, are they just going to go to the 42.6 and kind of, you know, I don't Nikon, know. Nikon's got that nice 45. Who knows? Who knows? I really, you know, Pentax is going to make a great camera. They usually do, and nobody's going to buy it, and it's sad. Um, let's jump over to my screen again because we've got one of my all-time favorite mistakes ever. Um, you're easily impressionable. If someone says, hey, Chris, you should do this, sometimes you you will do it. That um, is true. And also, I want to make an entertaining show for our viewers. Right. Which, yes. Which I appreciate. 
Um, and I also want to relive my youth and pretend that I can do things that I was able to do 15 years ago, which maybe I shouldn't be doing now. Now, uh, this video was for... This is for the Nikon D850. Yes, in oh. Oregon, Bend, Oregon. Yeah. And, Amazing um, shoot. And uh, Chelsea Northrup goaded me on. Okay. I mean, I don't know if goading is the word. She was like, hey, Chris, you should jump off that thing like you're a motorbike. That's, um, and you took it well, to the limits. <laughs> Walking along the razor's edge. Yeah. Um, speaking of, while you go oh, into the video. Oh, it's all queued up. Uh, oh. I want to play it. I love okay, it. Okay, play it, play it. Play it's it. not just, it's not just, oh, save it. that, though. The sound is very important yeah. to this. Okay. So yeah, okay. So listen to this. Now, it's a struggling to breathe right Why here. Why did I pick up my water bottle? What was I so concerned about that for? Oh yeah, a little dusty. I kind of like the Al Pacino. <laughs> I could not, I could not breathe. The D850 was fine, by the way. I was covered in dirt. My ribs hurt for about a week and a half, and that's fake news. That's that's a little bit of editing there, but man, but it looked good, right? Like I love the pose, and I did not like the landing. So your leg, how's that doing? I don't think it'll ever be the same again. Um, 38 year olds should not jump off motorcycle ramps. Those things just, you know, like the, it's a big drop off. You're like, this is not a big hill, but no, man, it's, yeah, I fell like six feet. This is a cautionary tale. Yeah. I think. Don't jump off motorcycle uh -huh. jumps unless you're in a motorcycle. <laughs> and you're not frightened of six foot drops. Oh, I wasn't frightened. I, I hit that jump like a champ. I yeah, didn't stick the landing. You didn't land it. No. Like a chance. Well, because you think, like, oh, the other side's a ramp. I'm just going to come gently down like a graceful ski jumper. But <laughs> if you if you jump too far, you just come down onto flat dirt, and it's not uh, nice. A ski jump's exactly the same. Um, Ian's got an interesting yeah. point. That, Anyways. Um, um, everybody watch the Winter Olympics. Ski jumps are long. They're really long. You got a lot of landing also, space. Also, you're wearing skis as opposed to when you jump Thank with you. just your legs and your legs bend forward in a direction that they're not really supposed to. Thank you, Jordan. Shattering. <laughs> yes. So, considering that you've made the jump with a D850, I got a gentleman asking uh, that they they would like to buy a Nikon D850 or a Sony A7R Mark III. Which they're would you incredibly me to buy? well dust sealed. The yeah. D850s are incredibly well dust sealed. We I haven't done a test with the A7R III. I think that's something we should definitely mm -hmm. look at. That is half yeah. Chris jump with an A7R3. Oh. Well, so, a, someone's been making a com uh, someone else made a comment that apparently the A7R 3s weather sealing is not quite imaging on resource point. finally did yeah. the test I've been aching to do for years. And they we've got. heard this for a long time. I and mean, we word on the street is that Sony A7 bodies, although weather sealed quite well, are not weather sealed on the bottom plate near the battery door. Yeah. That's a weak. They point. don't seem to be as well sealed as some of the competing yeah. professional DSLRs. Imaging Resource ran a test, yep. and they discovered that as well. Now, yeah. I'd love to see more tests like this, but huge. Like, we've been saying for five years, God, we want to do a weather sealing test, and someone actually did it. So huge props yep. to Imaging Resource for rolling well, the yeah, dice on that. Our bosses are like, we're not going to give you gear to soak in water with the potential that you're going to destroy them. So no, sorry, I'm sorry. Well, and we'd have to get a few of them to yeah. make sure that the results are repeatable for them to be. But legit. you know, I mean, so, and yeah, the Sonys aren't as weather sealed. The D850 stood up to that abuse very well. But I mean, you know, the D5 has some problems with water sealing around the battery door too, to be honest with you. So you know that. Uh, let's jump over to another clip here, guys. Here <laughs> but uh, yeah, D850, A7R3, that's a tough call. They're such similar cameras. They play in the exact same arenas. The the A7R3 is smaller and lighter, definitely. Better video camera. You know, it's mirrorless versus SLR. I think that's really going to be the difference. Just check the lens lineups. If you can work with the Sony lineup, I think that's a yeah. more future-proof body. But Nikon might still have some lenses you need. So go but yeah, D850 is an awesome camera. You can't camera. go wrong with either of them. Ten minutes. Oh, uh, God. Let's keep going. So this episode here, I'm going to show the uh, clip, and then we're going to talk through what happened at that point. Yeah. Well, I seem to have lost Chris in the crowd, so uh, I'm going to hang out at the lost child area here. Hope that uh, ever works. <laughs> so I lost Chris. I had no yeah. idea where you went. Busy um, event you to beat You were not picking up your phone. I was calling it. Uh, what happened there, Chris? I, I put my backpack down to change lenses, yep. and uh, I lost my backpack. There seems to be a trend here. And, of course, the minute I notice it, I'm like, oh, crap, there's no 
I didn't use the word crap. There's no backpack on my back. So I went back trying to like where retrace my steps. There's hundreds of people. It's totally gone, hopelessly lost. There was like a nice leaf filter, you know, big stopper in there, which sucks to lose. The backpack I lost. Luckily, I was carrying, we were doing a test between the Sigma 24 to 70 and the Tamron 24 to 70. Yep. And I had those on D850 bodies. Two D850 T bodies. Two D850. So luckily I didn't leave any So you're carrying gear. in excess of 10 grand Canadian worth of gear. Yes. Yeah. But I could have very well left a D850 in one of the cameras, uh, lenses in the backpack, right? Yeah. Uh, while shooting, but I had both on me. Thankfully, anyways, that was not fun. No, not my favorite. That was the Roots Gray Backpack, the, mess the 73 series. I like those a lot. Yeah. I have another one. Any questions there, Ron? All right. So 10 minutes. How many yeah, more videos do we have? Are we, oh. how is this many? our last yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. That, that was the last one. No, we're doing one. this is the last no, no, we one. Got I got one more. One more. Okay. Um, we got one more? Yeah, should we play it and do a speed Let, round? Yeah, yeah, let's do one more mm. speed round and then good day. Let's do it. Awesome. Let's so, do it. Um, over here. Now, this is lit with a single cheap LED. Um, yes. But you can, uh, I threw a lot of magenta at this to try and balance <laughs> things out a lot. Uh, this is the sickest I have, made, it's up there among the sick sickest I've been in my life, sure to be yes. hospitalized. This is in Arizona, we're doing the A7R3, you were very ill. Yeah. Um, you had zero fun. So for that, I, we go out late at night. Um, I got sick right after we finished shooting this. Um, Chris's solution for that was we're shooting some astrophotography. Yes. I think I've got a composition I like. Now, that doesn't really matter because you can see it's just empty blackness and some trees <laughs> beside me. But he puts me beside the worst outhouse in Arizona, <laughs> uh, which is about maybe like a five feet away. away yeah. out of the five feet away. Oh. It smelled. In my defense, <laughs> we're doing astrophotography. You, you've got like 15 photographers doing nighttime photography. You cannot have LED lights pointing at their cameras or anywhere nearby them wrecking their shot. So we could have walked further away. The <laughs> next thing is right we could have walked into the desert to find a beautiful composition to light with one single LED light. Right. Or I could just say, hey, let's shoot here. You've got some grass besides you. It'll work. <laughs> it could have been just nothing but black frame. So, and uh, the outhouse, I don't position these things. That's the Arizona State parks department i'm sorry like you know and it stunk i i took some astral you photography were in the shots middle of a desert and you chose five feet away from an outhouse <laughs> yeah see, there's there's that's the same tone i use <laughs> there are scorpions and rattlesnakes and all sorts of they stuff they were right still going to be near the outhouse too regardless <laughs> i did not wreck anybody's astral shots uh, let's do a speed round, guys, before we wrap it up for this uh, delightful Wait, live did, show. Did this we, has been a fun trip down memory lane. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was playing in the background. I mean, I you, know, you, just, you basically yeah. just see Jordan really ill standing next to a really smelly outhouse. <laughs> My hair slicked with sweat. You know what I should have done? You know what I should have done? I should have put you in the outhouse and lit the interior of the outhouse Gross. you sitting on the toilet. That's what I should have done. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is why we don't let him make all the decisions. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, Hit me with some questions, Ron. What else do, we... do you think we need cameras beyond 4K? No. No, no okay. I, I do think resolution is kind of a trap in video yeah. right now. We don't need it, no. Hey, not, you know what we need? until frame rates um, and standard shutter speeds are fast. We need 180-inch TVs. Yeah. For cheap. Um, okay. And Let's bigger see. houses. Uh, what are you hoping to see at NAB 2018? Ooh. All right. I think we're going to see updates to the Make FS5. <laughs> um, I would love to see that. I, Black Magic took a year off, which is weird. So hopefully we'll see some interesting things from those guys. Um, the C500 is probably going to get an update. And I want to see lights. We've seen yeah. so much cool stuff going on with lighting lately. I, I hope that trend Aperture's on fire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be interesting. And we're going to see some interesting stuff in audio, too. Things have been a little quiet from the big manufacturers, Roden Sennheiser, in terms of their professional shoddies. Which, by the systems. way, we yeah. broke. I just want to lay, um, we've had a Sennheiser mic pack go in the water, yep. in the river. Uh, we've also broke the Rode Filmmaker Labs, because they have plastic bodies, uh, quite a few times just sitting on those. Yeah. Lots of mics broken. So let's, let's we want stronger metal Filmmaker Lab. That's what I want. Yep. Uh, oh, there's almost made it. had to happen. Yeah. Oh, we crashed uh, a Phantom 2. That was fun. Yeah. Um, we dropped a Sony A9. With Tyler Stallman, that sucked. The, yeah. uh, that was expensive. That was an expensive one. That shotgun mic that we're using, is that a Sennheiser? That's a yeah, Sennheiser MKH-50. It is, MKH it is yeah. my favorite if you're doing interior recording. Uh, want to minimize ambient noise. It's a killer microphone. Killer microphone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hypercardioid. 
G nine suitable for Astro? Uh, I mean, it's not the best low light camera. Uh, you drop a speed booster on there to make up the difference. I think you could do some interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, again, I love Panasonic. It has to be said, the low light performance isn't great, and and one not only is it not great uh, compared to the other brands, but also, the way that they process low light, your your photos start to look kind of plasticky. They got a weird detail. So, yep. not my fave, but that's that's its weakness for sure. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna start a GoFundMe to get you some shoes, Chris. Uh, yeah. Right. There we go. Um, Actually, these have lasted me about six months, which is three months longer than shoes last me. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jordan, can you suggest a good entry level camera for sh recording amateur soccer games? Uh, RX10. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Um, well, that's around 700 US dollars. So maybe uh, RX10 uh, Mark III. Three? Three? Yep. Yeah, ish. Maybe. Um, I've said 2,500. Uh, the focus isn't the best on no, that. No, Sony. Max. Sony. Uh, what camera is better, EM1 Mark II or G9? G9. For, for wildlife. We're getting a lot of this lately. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm solidly in the G9 camp. They're okay. both great cameras. The G9 is going to be slightly better continuous autofocus. It's going to have similar IBIS. It's going to have a slightly better uh, 6K recording of photos and pre-burst mode. So shooting raw. For me, raw. it just comes down to the viewfinder. The viewfinder, viewfinder, yeah, viewfinder is amazing. But again, this is such a close match. Both cameras do a great job shooting sports. I just think the G9 is a better option overall, but both are very usable. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, is the Canon 60 Mark II ha uh, more terrible with Moray in video as opposed to the 60 Mark I? Uh, there's still some issues with Moray and aliasing with that guy. Um, still a little soft. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> best bang for the buck, Micro Four Thirds 4K camera for vlogging. G7. Thank you. Uh, any word on the A7 Mark III? Uh, what do you mean, I word? Yeah, okay. Uh, like, are we going to get more? Like, what WPPI do is coming up. I think it would make a lot of sense to throw out a, you know, a, the mid-range. Oh, did they say A7 III? A7 III. Oh, A7 III. Yeah, yeah, we haven't heard anything. Yeah. yeah I think uh, A7S III is going to be next. We'll see. Uh, I mean, the, R, the R's and S's have always done NAB. better than the standard 7 series. Yeah. So they might prioritize getting those guys to market first, but yeah. we will see. Absolutely. Um, I think Sony are going to make yeah like a like a more affordable version of the A9. I think that would make a ton of sense. Yeah. That silent that silent shent, that silent fast scanning sensor is one thing they've got no yeah. one else does. So cool. It would make sense to get that into another more accessible body for people who don't need 20 frames a second. Uh, what's your opinion on 5D Mark IV C log? Uh, it's C log. It's uh, it's a nice color profile. You got to send it in. Yeah, I think that's a that's pain. a pain. Um, yeah, I, it's a great option if you're shooting video with the uh, 5D. Yeah, um, certainly. It's the well 1080 the is beautiful. Finally, on the 5D Mark IV, I think that's the first camera they've really well the 1DX as well yep. that that have sharp 1080. But the 4K still has that horrible M motion, motion JPEG? JPEG compression. Yeah, that's just terrible. It's mm. it's an abomination. But if you got one and you're using it for video, get it logged. Log that camera. Yeah, get some dynamic range back. Uh. Let's see. Du, 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 du. I think we should say our closing things. What should nickels? We? Yeah. Nobody hates. On nobody Friday. said anything they hated. Where's all the hate? We asked for hate. Well, if people are willing to sit we through an hour long out, live show, they must kind of. We straight us. out asked for hate on the internet, and we're not getting any. We'll get some. Oh, we'll get some in the comments after is, this is, goes up. Is yeah. the Pentax Astro Tracer feature a gimmick? No, no it's I great. Love it. It's amazing. This if is you, why you're not getting hate. Yep. You know what would be amazing is if, if Panasonic had the uh, the low exposure, the low light exposure build that Olympus has, where you can just watch your exposure build up over time, yep. then Panasonic and combine would... it with something like the Sky Tracker technology. Uh, there's no reason they couldn't do that yeah. from Pentax. It's so cool, but it's still that Micro Four Thirds, so it's not great image difference. quality for that. But you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think that's everything we're, we're for this week, guys. Um, yeah. If right. you're local, please Friday come out for Wooden Nickels. Friday. It is. I can't believe what these guys were able to pull off for us. Yeah, and the acting is garbage, and, and the everything around it is color looks great. The, the people that helped us out did such a great job. The lighting's beautiful. It's composed well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Check it out. First fifty people. First fifty people get free, free beer. beer and popcorn and, and an a autographed signed autograph poster. poster. Yeah. yeah. Chris actually signed his name. I did, times. 50 times. All right, guys. We will see you uh, a couple weeks again on the live show. In the meantime, uh, looking forward to more of your comments afterwards. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Tell your friends that we're fun, and we'll see you guys all soon. <laughs> Huzzah. Good weekend, guys. Thanks to our amazing crew. Yeah. You're great. <laughs>